Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 389. Oh, now you know. So one of the things we always wanted to learn as a fundamental investor is how to leverage the power of technical analysis to identify trends, to potentially find the better entry or exit point of a certain investment or trade. This is where today's sponsor comes in. Moomoo is a great platform to conduct technical analysis and to trade both stock and options. For technical analysis, Moomoo offers indicators and drawing tools from advanced indicators like the Bollinger Bands, which indicate a possible moving range of a stock's price in the short term to the more commonly understood moving average lines and resistance and support lines. Other indicators such as the RSI and KDJ are also basics in the Moomoo app and desktop platform. For options, it offers features to identify unusual options activity, which aims to help an average investor make better investment decisions when picking an option. The platform charges absolutely zero commission to trade its stock and options, so this greatly reduces your trading cost. What's more is that Moomoo has an awesome feature where it uses AI algorithms to analyze historical stock charts to pick up price trends for your reference. This is an awesome feature, especially if you've just started learning about technical analysis or you're a veteran and you're trying to save some time identifying trends on your own. Please be advised that this feature is for reference only. You are advised to conduct comprehensive research and refer to your own risk tolerance before any investment decisions. Right now, Moomoo is offering its Cash Suite program, an exciting upgrade offering 5.1% APY plus an extra 3% APY on your uninvested cash. On top of that, new users can also receive up to 15 free stocks with a $1,000 deposit. Note that this is a limited time offer, which is ending February 29th. So be sure to jump on it quick while it lasts. So Electric published an article headlined, Tesla worker died in horrible crash on full self-driving beta, but he was also drunk. Tesla owners Silicon Valley tweeted on X. They said, Fred Lambert is spreading fake news. The person in question was three times above the legal limit of alcohol, which means you can't intervene if necessary. Also, it hasn't been confirmed whether full self-driving was engaged. Well, and then Elon followed up and said he was not on full self-driving. The software had unfortunately never been downloaded. I say unfortunately because the accident probably would not have happened if FSD had been engaged. All right, so this accident occurred almost two years ago, and the driver, a Tesla employee, Hans Von Ohain, died when he crashed the Tesla he was driving into a tree. Von Ohain was legally drunk. His autopsy showed that he had a 0.26 blood alcohol level. Now, my point here is that whether the car had FSD beta installed or not, it was the driver's responsibility not to get behind the wheel drunk. Now, the legal blood alcohol limit in Colorado is 0.08. So the driver in this case was more than three times over the legal limit, period. End of story. Why the Washington Post, which is owned by Jeff Bezos, by the way, and Fred Lambert from Electra continually choose to throw shade at Tesla, well, you'll have to be the judge. If you choose to get behind the wheel drunk or use a driver assistance feature incorrectly, you're endangering your life and the lives of others, and therefore it is illegal. Trying to then blame Tesla because they made a driver assistance feature, which statistically has been shown to have already saved thousands of lives, well, that would be like saying, so, how did you end up here? I drove my car into a tree, but it's not my fault. It's the airbag manufacturer's fault because I thought I could drive my car into a tree and survive unscathed. Isn't that what airbags are for? No, I don't think that's how it works, dear. St. Peter, do I have to share a cloud with this moron? And before you go like, but how do we know that he wasn't in full self-driving? Well, Tesla has data on this. They have data on all their cars and especially what is downloaded in each car. The problem in this case is that the car did catch on fire. And so Tesla didn't have the last 30 seconds of data. But if it hadn't installed full self-driving, then yeah, how were you driving in it? Well, and again, I just want to point out that this story is also from two years ago. Well, and that seems to fit the playbook, right? You bring up things when it suits you. I mean, yeah, this was filed with NHTSA two years ago. Why are we talking about it now? Weird. Mm. All right, so Sawyer Merritt posted update. There's been a development today in Elon's $56 billion pay package case, so I wanted to break it down so people understood better. Based on a new letter filed yesterday, it sounds like Tesla and Elon Musk will appeal the ruling. Before Elon and Tesla can appeal, the two sides will propose a final order for approval by Judge McCormick, which will include a petition for 
for a legal fee. That legal fee, which will be paid by Tesla, is expected to be one of the largest ever, if not the largest, legal fee ever paid in history, billions. Tesla will likely oppose it. The fee petition is expected to be filed by March 1st. If that's approved, Elon would have 60 days to file an appeal with the Delaware Supreme Court. An appeal is expected to take at least six months to resolve. Doge Army General says a lawyer making billions of dollars by stripping the voting rights of shareholders and oversight of the board is one of the most disgusting things that has ever happened to capitalism and entrepreneurship. And Elon said, absolutely. Ashley St. Clair said Elon getting compensation for providing value to shareholders, very bad. Lawyers taking billions from shareholders and fees, very good. And Austin said, regardless of what you think of Elon's pay package, there's no chance the lawyers that brought the case should make billions with a B. Elon said the law firm is the actual villain here. The fake shareholder who owned seven shares was merely their puppet. Johnny says, I recommend Wyoming, but be advised that if you're a startup hoping to take on partners or be acquired, Delaware is still a requirement for many seeking such opportunities. Elon says, none of my companies will consider acquiring a company incorporated in Delaware as it is a guarantee of spurious litigation. And so I just want to take a step back here. So you have this one guy. He owns seven shares of Tesla. He gained money since he bought his shares. All the shareholders did, yes. Because, I mean, he bought this, like, before 2018. Mm -hmm. He goes to sue Tesla saying, you're going to pay Elon Musk too much shares. So I think that uh, that's bad. This is a class action lawsuit. With even one, With one guy one in the class. Right. Tells you something about small classes. But then I could understand if he had lost, like, six thousand dollars or something that maybe tesla could you know uh, throw him a bone or something like that but he gained money but then the lawyers get to get billions of dollars i, I, I slow down so how, how, how does that work it has nothing to do with the shareholders it has to do with the lawyers i just don't understand how the pay package has anything to do with the lawyers getting paid because uh, isn't this the wrong incentive to set? I mean, isn't yeah, being the a law lawyer... Firm, the law firm knew that they could do this and that they would get paid. So they did it. I, again, I understand getting paid. I don't understand getting paid. Well, they spent thousands of, of hours, you know, and... Uh, right, we're, and, and hey, hey, you know what? They, sure, sure. I'm sure they Let, padded their the bill. The judge agreed with them. So let's say that they need to be reimbursed for their time. Sure. And rooms let's and say, rooms full of lawyers. Let's say it was it was a thousand dollars an hour for each lawyer. And let's say each lawyer spent a thousand hours working on that. Okay. So that's what are we talking? A million dollars per lawyer. Let's say there were a let's say there were a hundred lawyers. So it's a hundred million dollars. We're still orders of magnitude less than what we're talking about here. Maybe it took them longer. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't think that one court case should net you. So that would be essentially, let's say that there were 100 lawyers, which there aren't. Let's say that they all worked 1,000 hours, which who the hell knows. And that would mean that they would be earning tens of thousands of dollars per hour. I just don't understand it. I just don't think that that's legal. That maybe, shouldn't be legal. Maybe you should go to law school. I don't know. I don't want to be a leech on society like this. What the f I know. I mean, how is how is that legal? How is that more legal than the guy who works for the company? They want to make basically the same amount of money that Elon would have made working for the company, making it the most successful company in the world. Anyway, if you want to learn a little bit more about this, uh, we talked about it a lot more in depth on one of our earlier Tesla Time News. We'll put the uh, card up here and you can go check it out. But hey, if you think that this is bullshit too, please hit the like button. Well, speaking of bullshit, the uh, Holmars catalog says Dan O'Dowd broke the law. So the NTSB's legal counsel, William McCurry Jr. writes, It has come to our attention that your second Super Bowl commercial airing on February 11th prominently and unlawfully displays the official seal of the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB. Use of the NTSB seal outside of the NTSB is prohibited without the prior written approval of the NTSB. OK, but this is just a cease and desist letter. Yeah. Per the federal code, uh, 18 code U.S. section 1017, they could seek a fine or up to five years imprisonment, but, uh, you know, they won't. You so, I mean, are we allowed to show the symbol? I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, it's on their letterhead. Oh, OK. Um, Elon said, uh, unsurprising that Dan O'Dowd broke the law. Tesla Boomer Papa says, so he claims the software will try to kill you. I think this deserves a lawsuit, Elon. And Elon said he has lost his marbles. So we ran a Patreon poll this week. Uh, we asked to see what our patrons think, and we'll show you that later in the show. But Ray says, interesting to see that Dan O'Dowd is spending money on X to spread his bullshit. Elon laughed out loud.
Yeah, so let us know in the comments what you think about Dan O'Dowd. So let's now go to Sweden for an update on the IF Metal Union strike against Tesla because Tesla won't sign that collective bargaining agreement for their employees there. On IF Metal's website, we now read this statement, which is translated from Swedish. Tesla continues to refuse collective bargaining agreements. Since the conflict looks like it will be long lasting, IF Metal is now offering a temporary dispensation. It will help Tesla owners who have been hit hardest by the conflict. The details are that if you have a Tesla in Sweden with repairs needed that make the car inoperable, so not just a ding, scratch, or USB port that doesn't work, then the union will allow your Tesla to be fixed between now and April 30th. The contract secretary of the IF Metal Union in Sweden, Veli Pekka Saikala, says that if you have a dent, quote, they get to drive around dented as an advertisement for Tesla. Saikala says that after the end of April, no vehicle repairs will be allowed again. When this window is closed, it will be very difficult to get your car fixed, so you have to think about which car you buy. Okay. This is just me stating my opinion now, but I've been watching this story unfold since last October, and it's been apparent to me that the union doesn't seem to care about workers or car owners in Sweden. They are essentially blackmailing Tesla, threatening Tesla into signing a collective bargaining agreement. Now, you may say, come on, Tesla, just sign it and move on. Wouldn't that be easier than fighting the union on this? And yes, it would be easier for Elon to sign it, but would it be better? And the problem is not that unions aren't necessary in some cases where companies are mistreating their employees, but now that this story has been ongoing for months, I've gotten to read statement after statement from Tesla employees who describe working for Tesla in Sweden as being a great job. Some have said that Tesla's the best employer they've ever had. Only a tiny number of employees even complained to begin with, and those employees were complaining that they had high standards that Tesla expected them to accomplish. Well, you know what? I have a solution that's much easier than this. If you don't like the standards that your employer wants you to work at, then quit and find another job. Um, excuse me, Dale, I see that you're wearing that Megadeth t-shirt again to work today. We've discussed this last week. You have to wear appropriate clothes to work here on the Sunny Side Up restaurant. Our customers deserve friendly wait staff. This is bullshit. <laughs> if people don't like Megadeth, then they can go somewhere else for breakfast. Uh, that's the point, Dale. We don't want them to go somewhere else for breakfast. We want to keep them as customers. I'm calling my union rep. I should be allowed to wear anything I want to work. This is Sweden. Uh, no, Dale, this is America. Then I'm moving to Sweden. I'll bet I can wear my Megadeth t-shirt there. That's a great idea, Dale. In fact, I'll chip in the plane ticket for you. Stay strong, Tesla. I think people are beginning to see that the union is losing public support. And I just want to take a step back here for a minute because this, you know, these quotes from the union make it sound like they have stopped Tesla from, you know, being able to conduct repairs, which is not true. No. So what they're essentially saying is that they're backing down on certain things that have no correlation to reality because in reality, Tesla is able to conduct repairs in Sweden because there are employees who are who you know feel like working and eat, despite intimidation by the union, still feel like, you know, yeah, this is a good job. I'm not gonna strike, lose all my compensation over pretty much nothing since I like my job already. So this idea that like, well, until you have until April 30th is a lie. So they're putting out this lie out there to make it sound like, and then, you know, we read it, news people read it. Um, I am telling you this, most other news agencies don't even do the research to like find out if this is true, but then they go like, oh my God, isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. that, that people aren't gonna be able to drive their cars after April 30th? It's like, no, uh, everyone's been able to continually have service in Sweden. It's just that the union here is lying to you. Uh, but what do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Hey, we're excited to be working with Climate Exchange and promoting their EV raffle back for the eighth year. The grand prize drawing takes place on February 29th, which is just about a week away. So this year's grand prize is your choice of any EV on the market, a Tesla, Rivian, Lucid, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Polestar, fully customized up to $112,835 plus Climate Exchange will pay all the taxes too. And even if you don't win the grand prize, Climate Exchange has cash prizes for second through fifth place. And since they're only selling 5,000 tickets, your odds of winning a prize are actually pretty good. Let us know what you would choose if you win by leaving a comment below. I think I would get a Model X Plaid in ultra red uh, with 22 inch turbine wheels of course, the tow package. Uh, I'm thinking maybe the cream interior with six seats and the yoke steering wheel. Okay, all right, wake up, wake up.
Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Climate Exchange is also providing $5,000 in charging support to the winner to help install a home charger or to use on the road. Think about it. Awesome prizes and you're supporting Climate Exchange, a nonprofit that's doing really important work. But act fast. The drawing is on February 29th, but they have already sold most of the tickets and they could sell out any minute. So don't miss out on possibly winning your dream EV today. Go to CarbonRaffle.org to get your ticket and good luck. So Tesla opened Powerwall 3 orders in the U.S. last Friday with Tesla Energy posting on Friday. Powerwall 3 is now available in the U.S. 11.5 kilowatts of power to back up most homes with one unit, fully integrated solar inverter and DC coupled battery expansion units for simple, low cost installs, durable exterior with storm watch and heat mode for extreme weather protection, virtual power plant participation to maximize the value of your stored energy. And Elon commented, what matters most about Powerwall 3 is that it can handle peak power of about 30 kilowatts, which is enough to handle dryers and air conditioners. This means that a single Powerwall is now enough for most homes. And I mean, what CEO does that? What CEO says, hey, you know what? Let's make the third version of our product even better so that customers won't have to buy two or three of them. Yeah, I mean, it's so smart because this means that way more people can now afford to get a Powerwall for their home and add Tesla energy to their ecosystem. Here was this really cool tweet thread from Lars. Scott said, a Tesla tech told me that the Highland suspension was essentially the same as the comfort suspension on the current Model Y. Is that true? And Lars, Tesla's VP of Vehicle Engineering, responded, the new Model 3 has unique shock-absorbing technology called Frequency Selective Damping, which improves ride comfort by isolating shake frequencies in your belly, 5 to 6 hertz, without losing response in steering. Basically, just makes the small nibbles in the road disappear. But, uh, hang on. 4 to 6 hertz rumbling in my tummy? Like, what? That's like, 4 to 6 hertz. That's um, really, like, slow, right? You're, you're at, like half a hertz there oh, okay. you're like two hertz there okay so it's 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 this it's the it's the kind of like uh you know it's the bumps on the road okay. and because none of this really makes any sense so he actually posted this picture which i'd never seen before it's turning the human body into uh showing the resonance wow right because each of our body parts has right. different so masses like when you're going around and like, you know, whoa, whoa, whoa. wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube men um and wow that's so cool <laughs> yeah it's something that I've noticed having driven both my Model 3, which is, you know, not the newest one with the active damping, but it has excellent suspension. Compare that with like the Ford F-150 Lightning, which of course is a truck and it's got truck suspension. But I feel like it has full, like when we're talking about resonance, the, there's one that's missing off this chart and that's your full body. Right. Um, I go over some bumps in the Ford and I can just, and it's just like, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wow, this sucks. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know. And also the Rivian. The Rivian has, you know, recently gotten its like soft suspension upgrade. Um, and I feel like it's just made it more like kind of those four to six hertz in my belly. I can really feel them when I go over the bumps. I think what's funny is, you know, this week on Patreon Bonus Stories, we're going to be talking about Tesla's new Model 3 ad. Mm. And they don't even mention this stuff, which I, I think is huge. I mean, this makes the car way more comfortable. I know. All right, it's time for the Cybertruck Roundup. Yeehaw! The Cybertruck Roundup. So Tesla has added a new referral program award. Sawyer Merritt says, breaking. Tesla has introduced a new referral program award that allows you to accelerate your Cybertruck delivery for 30,000 credits. Be invited to configure and take delivery of a Foundation Series all-wheel drive or Cyber Beast within 45 days of redemption. And it's already sold out. What? I don't understand. You spend your points and you get moved up in the line. You, you bump everyone what? else. Yeah. No. Now, we don't know how many people got this before. Hours later, it was sold out. Don't. So. Oh, <laughs> don't get it. We're high in the line. Come on. Oh, come on. I want to spend my referral I know. credits to well, get the it. The thing is, we shut up. Like, we stopped asking people to use our referral code because we wanted you guys to use them. But uh, yeah, I kind of wish we hadn't. I wish we had 30,000 credits laying around. That's annoying. Now, there have been a lot of headlines talking about how the Cybertruck is rusting. Now, we're in Massachusetts, and Massachusetts has not taken any Cybertruck deliveries yet, so we don't have a Cybertruck that we can show you if there's any rust on it or not. However, Bearded Tesla posted this video. Yeah, in his video, he does a great job of showing exactly what people are talking about and how he fixed it. So let's just talk about it for a second. So there's these basically little speckles of what people think are rust all throughout 
the Cybertruck exterior, which of oh, course no! is, which is stainless steel. And so people are going like, well, it's called stainless, not stain none, uh, which is, you know, sick burn. But also Bearded Tesla thinks that this is embedded steel that isn't stainless steel. So what he's talking about is he thinks that um, basically there's little iron filings that are getting flung off of like a grinding tool or a train wheel as these... Uh, you know, cyber trucks are being delivered and that these little iron filings get embedded into the stainless steel. And then when it rains, those pieces of steel rust, um, which makes it look like that the actual stainless steel is rusting. I mean, that's what he posits. But of course, Tesla hater nation claims that it's, you know, Tesla's stainless steel itself. People talking about how DeLoreans would rust in the rain and then it just devolves very quickly. Now, Bearded Tesla was able to solve this problem with what's called uh, Barkeeper's Friend. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very common product to use on stainless steel, uh, like refrigerators and stuff, usually to get like fingerprints off. Now, he was able to kind of buff out the rust um, and show that it, you know, you didn't see any after he was done. A lot of people are claiming that like that's way too much work and that this is ridiculous. My question is, first of all, uh, do we care? Or do we only care because we don't have our cyber trucks? We're not tooling around in them right now. <laughs> Probably because I think that this is the problem when you have something that you really, really, really want, and there's people who will talk endlessly about it and find every little microscopic flaw in it. Um, people tend to just focus on that because they're like, "Well, I'm not driving my truck right now, and I'm mad, so it's not even that good because it rusts and I hate it." That's the first part, and the second part is, I mean, this is only cosmetic, as far as we know. I mean, I know what rust looks like on vehicles. I've owned vehicles before and I live in New England, so I know what rust looks like. I know what parts of my car falling off due to rust looks like. You know what having to basically uh, scrap a car looks like because the frame rusted out. Mm -hmm. um, what we're talking about here isn't necessarily the same thing. Okay, these are little teensy tiny speckles on, on, a, on a stainless steel body. Right. Which I couldn't even see until they zoomed in. Now, the, the question that I have is that if this theory is true and that these are embedded pieces of iron, um, once they get buffed out, does this problem completely go away? Like, is this just because it's somewhere in the factory, some dude's like grinding a whole bunch of steel and sparks are, you know, flying off and hitting the steel? My guess steel? it's from the, the transportation um, okay. A lot of times you put some plastic on the cars, especially on the leading edges, just for this reason, right? Mm -hmm. So that they don't get nicked or whatever. And I think in this case, I haven't seen a Cybertruck actually get wrapped um, that's being transported. And so I feel like it's just because they haven't done that. Right. Um, and then I think it's funny because, you know, like Tesla is this, you know, very eco-friendly green company. And part of the reason why they do the stainless steel is that way they don't have to paint the cars. And people are like, they should put plastic wrap all over the car before they deliver it to me. So this problem doesn't happen. It's like... Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It always comes down to the lowest common denominator, doesn't it? <laughs> but, you know, Tesla continues its Cybertruck Asia tour with Tesla Asia posting this Friday. Cybertruck ignites Tokyo with its first appearance in Japan, turning heads. Yes, I mean, this is the cheapest advertising Tesla could possibly do. Yeah, they just ship, move the truck they around ship the world. one truck to China <laughs> and then they're like, all right, well, everyone in China saw it or at least a picture of it. So now we'll move it to Japan. Yep. And make a huge media stir just to move one truck around. Yeah. It's awesome. really cool. Hey, and if you want to follow everything that's going on with Cybertruck, including the rust, you can go over to our friends at the Cybertruck Owners Club and find out everything you need to know along with the tracker. Right. Not only can you find out where you are in line, you can find out who has already taken delivery. So if you have taken delivery of your Cybertruck or you know someone who has, please get them over to that tracker. So then that you can curse can, them when you then, see them on the list. <laughs> then we can know where the Cybertrucks are being delivered. Why did you get yours first? And then you know when to expect yours. So... What if you get an EV charger and it doesn't already have a plug on the end of it to plug it into the wall? Yeah, like you order one online, but you weren't paying close enough attention when you were checking out and you thought you were going to get this. But then when it arrives, you get this instead. Well, hopefully we can help you with our latest video on our Now Let's Review channel. Now, if you're looking into getting a battery backup system for your house, but the cost of an energy grid connected system is still outside your budget, because let's face it, $11,000 plus is a lot of money. We just released an in-depth on Friday showing you how you can back up your house for thousands of dollars less. Yeah, we tested out a home battery kit from Anchor Solix. The kit we tested comes with the F3800 battery and a transfer switch. You and Ernie installed it in just an hour. Yeah, it was way easier than I thought it would be. 
And for many people, I think this battery and transfer switch is just the ticket. It costs less than half the price of a grid-connected battery, and with 3.8 kilowatt hours, it can handle a bunch of circuits in your home to keep you warm, working, and well-lit during a blackout. And as we discussed in the video, Anchor Solix's system is expandable. Yeah, you can add more and more batteries if you need them, and it's all plug and play. This video came about because you were talking with my aunt, your sister, about a month ago, and she just had a blackout. Yeah, she lost everything in her fridge. Uh, she couldn't work from home during the blackout. She asked me about possible solutions because, you know, I'm the Tesla guy. <laughs> but the grid-connected batteries that we talked about were all out of her budget range. So I started thinking, okay, wait a minute, fridge, home office, maybe another circuit or two. That's not that much power. What if... So we found the Anchor Solix F3800 home backup kit with the transfer switch, and it looked kind of perfect, but... Yeah, I didn't want to recommend it to my sister before we tested it for ourselves. So that's what we did. We hooked it up here and put it through its paces to see how the installation process worked and how much power it delivered. And it really impressed me. So now we just need to drive it over to her house and get it installed before the next blackout. <laughs> So go check out our in-depth to see if this cheaper battery solution from Anchor Solix F3800 might solve your needs as well. And thank you to Anchor Solix for sponsoring our channel and letting us get our hands on this cool technology. Also, now we're not tax experts here, but the way we read the IRS guidelines, it looks like this battery, because it's over three kilowatt hours, would qualify for the 30% US federal tax credit. Ooh, that could mean $1,200 off. Now. Again, disclaimer, we're not tax experts. Consult a tax expert first, but I just wanted to show you, I went to the IRS website, I used my little brain, I tried to read through it, and it looks like starting in 2023, they were offering the 30% tax credit, which would give you up to $1,200 off. And I mean, that would make a huge difference in the price. That's really exciting. And it, even when we're talking about bigger batteries, it yeah. means that you're going to get 30% off of the bigger battery. Excellent. So Jim Farley, CEO of Ford, attended the Wolf Research Conference this week, and he said, quote, if you're looking for the future of the automotive industry, stop looking at FSD and Tesla. Look at Ford Pro. It's got half a million subscribers with 50% gross margins. Wait a minute. I thought Ford's driver assistance was called Blue Cruise, not Ford Pro. Blues Cruise? Yeah, well, that's because Farley wasn't talking about Blues Cruise. He was talking about Ford Pro. Blue Cruise. Okay, so so wait, wait, what is Ford Pro? I mean, is that their latest full self-driving system that I haven't heard about yet? No, Ford Pro is the third of Ford's divisions. Ford Blue, which is Ford's ICE car division, Ford Model E, which is their EV division, and Ford Pro, which encapsulates everything to do with commercial vehicles. Confusingly, they call pretty much everything in that division Ford Pro, so it's really hard to know what anyone is talking about. But it includes Ford's commercial vehicles, which they call Ford Pro vehicles. Get it? Fleet software, which they call Ford Pro Intelligence. Commercial service, which they call Ford Pro Service. Commercial charging, which they call Ford Pro Charging. And commercial financing, which they call... Let me guess. Ford Pro Financing. Nope. Ford Pro Finsimple. Okay, so what does all of this have to do with full self-driving? Nothing. Well, then why bring it up? Well, because Jim Farley doesn't think that that's the future of the automotive industry. He thinks that having a commercial division, which is gouging their clients to get 50% margins, is the future. Also, hasn't Ford already had a commercial division like this whole time? I mean, how is that the future? I mean, I, I guess I just don't understand this. This is like a non sequitur. It's like saying, if you're looking for the future of the video game industry, stop looking at GTA 6 and Rockstar. Look at Microsoft Excel. It doesn't make any sense. That doesn't even make any sense. What you have to keep in mind is that Jim Farley is out there doing damage control. And a big part of that is controlling the narrative. And what a better way to do that than by telling you, the listener, what to do. Stop paying attention to the future of the automotive industry. Pay attention to me instead. Here's a cool piece of cherry pick data. Narrative shifted like a magician. I mean, this is just like... They're just burying their heads in the sand. Well, also, it's like they're telling their customers that, hey, we're price gouging you and you're supposed to be happy about it. Well, and I think that the really funny thing is it took me a long time to understand exactly what Ford Pro was, because if you Google Ford Pro, you end up looking at Ford Pro Intelligence, which they don't even it's hard to tell that that's even what they're talking about. So you think that it's just like telematics of their cars. And they're like, if you pay us extra, we'll tell you when your car is broken right. um, and we'll tell you where your car is. And you can set, you know, you can make sure that your <laughs> your guy who you know uses your truck doesn't drive outside of the bounds without you getting notified. And I was like, how is that 
worth anything? Why would I switch my attention well, over to that? Yeah, I mean, he's basically saying, like, don't look at Tesla and what they're doing with full self-driving. We have software, too, but our software is doing something completely different. Right. It's not doing anything that all that innovative. I mean, it's great that you have telematics, but, like, you can buy a $100 little brick that will communicate its GPS location and tell you all the telematics of the truck. According to the Minister of Infrastructure in Brandenburg, Rainier Genlike, there will be a train running between Tesla's Giga Berlin factory and the city of Berlin that will start running on April 1st. This train for Tesla employees will make the roughly 35-kilometer trip between Berlin Lichtenberg and Tesla Sud in about 40 minutes. Elon posted, this will really help our people. So Giga Berlin currently employs about 12,000 people, most of whom commute from Berlin. And get this, according to the Minister of Infrastructure, the new connection was ordered and paid for by Tesla. Now get this, normally a one-way ticket from Berlin to Giga Berlin would be three euros and 80 cents, but Tesla is paying that as well for everyone, both employees and local residents. So it's a free ticket to ride. Yeah. Nice. I mean, that's a nice way to get to and from work, right? Where you just sit on a train, read a book or whatever, and uh, you don't have to worry about buying a car and paying for all that expense. You don't even have to pay for the train ticket. And it's so smart for Tesla as well, because then they don't have to build a big parking structure. So Lucid just announced big price cuts to all their models. Check this out. Pure is down $7,500. The Touring is down 8000 The Grand Touring is down 1000 And, uh, well, no change to the Sapphire. <laughs> it's still it's still a quarter <laughs> of a million dollars. Sorry, folks. In fact, it's a little more than a quarter of a million. So you can tell all your friends, my car is worth more than a quarter of a million dollars. You're welcome. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, Lucid really cares about their customers. They just want to make owning a Lucid more affordable. Uh, no. As we've been saying for years, Lucid is having trouble competing with Tesla. In all of 2023, Lucid only delivered 6,001 cars. Let's make it 6,001 cars. <laughs> uh, we haven't seen full 2023 financial results yet, but Lucid is expecting a loss, a loss of $2.9 billion for this year. Jim O'Kane says to put Lucid's financial situation in Star Wars terms. And Elon said, pretty much. But if that's true, then how come I just read this? Lucid's board has approved a $6 million cash bonus for the company's CEO, Peter Rawlinson. Lucid says this bonus is for Peter's, quote, significant contributions to this milestone achievement which is, I guess, in relation to the Lucid Gravity SUV unveiling in late 2023. Good point. Farzad just posted, I'm about to buy 10 shares of Lucid and sue the company for massively overpaying the CEO. And Elon said his comp is inversely proportionate to performance. I'm not even kidding. I mean, how come Elon's compensation plan is questioned, but CEOs like this who can't compete and run their share prices into the ground get bonuses? Yeah, Lucid's stock price dropped 66% in the last year. Tesla, on the other hand, is up 12,000% since it IPO'd. Because I think a lot of people don't understand what these percentages mean, let me ask you. So if I had invested $10,000 in Tesla shares on the day that Tesla IPO'd on June 29th, 2010, how much would that be worth today if I held the shares for 14 years? Okay, let's see. Um, that would be about 588 shares at $17. At today's share price, your Tesla shares would now be worth $1,639,825.60. So let's just say $1.6 million. My $10,000 investment would now be worth $1.6 million just 14 years late. Now, what if I had invested $10,000 in Lucid when it IPO'd? Okay. Uh, Lucid spac on July 26th, 2021, merging with Churchill Capital at an initial price of $10 a share. It immediately spiked. So for like the first two years, while everyone went gaga over the stock, you would have been lucky to get it for less than, say, $16 a share. But you know what? Let's just say somehow you were able to buy it on day one for $10 a share, which nobody did. Today, Lucid shares are trading below $4 a share. So your $10,000 investment would be worth less than $4,000 today, a loss of over 66%. So I didn't gain $4,000. I lost $6,000. And now I have $4,000. Correct. And he gets a bonus. And he gets blasted by a Delaware judge. By the way, if you're like, but Peter Rawlinson only got a $6 million bonus. That's nothing compared to what Elon's pay package was. Well, keep in mind that as of 2022, just one year after Lucid's IPO, Rawlinson had already gotten $379 million in compensation as Lucid's CEO. 
because he got stuck. It's now time for We, we told, told You This, this would, happen. would Happen. Last week, we reported on California's new proposed bill that would require a special e-bike driver's license and not allow kids under 12 to ride e-bikes. Now to New Jersey, where Bill S-2292 would require e-bike riders to register with the state and pay for liability insurance. Come on, New Jersey. E-bikes are classified as consumer products, not motor vehicles by the federal government. But of course, you'd like to force riders to register them. And pay to insure them. I wonder who lobbied for this bill. Oh, I see. Insurance companies spent $157 million on lobbying government in 2023. Let me look up how much did e-bike riders spend on lobbying government last year. Let me add that up for you. Okay. Um, and nothing. So great job, California and New Jersey. You're going to make it harder for people to commute to work and get out and enjoy the great outdoors. No. You know what? We have the power to stop this nonsense. These aren't laws yet, and we aren't powerless. Californians. Just get out of here. Get on the 405 until you can't take it anymore. All right. Like to Ventura? New Jerseyans, contact your representative and tell them. I like the one that says shampoo. No, no that, that's not what you say. You say. No why. That's right. You say, no way. I want to keep riding my e-bike freely without paying a stupid fee and having to get an insurance policy to go for a ride with my family. And that's why we're telling you about these things, because if they become laws in one state, they will spread like a virus across all of America and then all of Europe, and then everyone's going to have to get a license. Oh, can I ride my e-bike today? No! <laughs> oh, I don't have enough money to pay for insurance. The only bikes you can ride are for fit people. Are you not f***ing jacked? Do, is there some problem with you? Oh, and, is there some something? Are you stupid? And I just want to say, if you go to one of these hearings and people are talking about, well, they're motorized vehicles and they have big motors. And blah, uh, they could I, hit somebody. I want you to talk normal about. Normal bikes could hit people. I want you to talk about the normal bikes ridden by the people who are going 25 miles an hour. They hurt when they hit you. Maybe they should get insurance, too. And while we're at it, let's make you get insurance while you're walking your dog, too, because you could the, the leash could get wrapped around something and you could trip. Just walking around. I mean, going to the grocery store with yeah, those carts. Insurance. Those I think carts. We should before insurance. you go into the grocery store. They should have licenses. They should on have them. a little guy outside with a clipboard, and he goes, "Okay, that'll be seventy five dollars." Have you taken your test to see if you can push the cart safely? Hey, if you'd like to share a clip you've seen here on the show, but you don't want to share the whole show, go to our Now You Know Clips channel. Over. All right, it's time for Ellie in space with the SpaceX update. Hey, Zach and Jesse, here is your SpaceX weekly wrap up. Apparently, Kanye West may be the reason why we have a new Starship ETA for the third launch. Elon Musk recently replied to a post from Kanye West saying, Elon, where my rocket ship in reference to Kanye's new song. And Elon said that Starships are meant to fly and he thinks the next flight will be in about three weeks. So somewhere in the beginning of March, maybe March 4th. Plus, SpaceX had to have their Falcon team consult their Starship team for the use of methane in a Falcon 9 in a unique way for the first time. SpaceX just used methane on a Falcon 9 rocket for the first time. And yes, the Falcon team had to consult the expertise of the Starship team for this change. And this happened recently with the launch of the Intuitive Machines 1 lander or the IM-1 lander. This launch required SpaceX teams to design a new fueling system and procedures to load the lander with liquid methane and oxygen while encapsulating it in a Falcon 9 fairing. So the collaboration between the Falcon and Starship teams shows SpaceX's integrated approach to innovation, especially exploring the versatility of methane as a propellant for different vehicle classes. Now that lander is beginning its multi-day journey to the South Pole of the Moon. But this mission is just the first the Falcon fleet will launch for NASA's CLIPS program, which will help enable humanity to explore the moon, Mars, and beyond, bringing us one step closer to making life multiplanetary. And finally, SpaceX has moved incorporation to Texas as Elon Musk continues to blast the state of Delaware. This move comes just weeks after, as you know, the Delaware judge struck down Musk's 55.8 billion pay package as CEO of Tesla. 
So yeah, Zach and Jesse, a lot is coming to Texas. SpaceX is Elon's second business to be reincorporated from Delaware to a new state since the January ruling. Neuralink also moved its legal corporate home from Delaware to Nevada earlier this month. And finally, we know that a long time ago, Elon said that Starship would do its R&D in Texas and eventually run its operations in Florida. And it looks like they're making moves on that progress. Florida may become a launch and landing site for Starship. The proposed future launch site for the two-stage rockets, the most powerful in history, would be at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. If you guys want more SpaceX news, head over to my channel, Ellie in Space, and I'll see you next week. Thanks, Ellie. And Elon reposted the SpaceX post, stacking the world's tallest and most powerful launch vehicle at Starbase. And Sawyer Merritt said, news. SpaceX is planning to build a new multi-million dollar office as part of a broader $100 million expansion in the area. The project will be located at Starbase in Texas, and the office project has a completion date of January 1st, 2025. This SpaceX Starbase office project includes five levels of offices in addition to one million square feet of special use industrial factory space. SpaceX also plans to open a $15 million shopping center and restaurant at Starbase called Rio West, which includes a restaurant with 3,500 square feet of indoor dining space and an outdoor deck overlooking the Rio Grande. So where exactly is this going? Well, according to the permit, it's going right here where it says Airstream Park 2 on the map. Oh, no, they're going to have to tear down the Airstream Park. Um, Well, I think they just... Drive up with the Model Y and just roll them away. Roll them out of the way. Okay. (laughs) And Elon said it's already well underway. That's exciting. And what I found interesting was that the average home price for houses in the Brownsville area historically was less than other border towns in Texas. But look at this. Brownsville is the red line. So since 2020 and Starbase's arrival, Brownsville's average home price has now trended above all the other Texas border towns for the first time. Wonder why that is. Hmm. And uh, just for a throwback here, we get the site from five years ago from RGV Aerial Photography. And Elon says, much progress in five years. And Sawyer Merritt says SpaceX has won a license to operate Starlink in Israel and parts of the Gaza Strip after agreeing to a series of measures to prevent Hamas from getting access to its satellite internet services. Elon says it's our hope to help both the people of Israel and, with all due care, innocent civilians in Gaza. This approval by Israel is greatly appreciated. In such a terrible situation, we should strive for conspicuous acts of kindness whenever possible. And Elon Musk reported that four rockets on their launch pad simultaneously. That is a first for SpaceX. And of course, SpaceX has moved its state of incorporation from Delaware to Texas. And Elon says, if your company is still incorporated in Delaware, I recommend moving to another state as soon as possible. And of course, they updated their logo. And SpaceX has now launched three rockets in 23 hours as of last Thursday evening. And with it, their 300th Falcon 9 rocket launch. Crap, they're catching up to Tesla Time News. (laughs) I know, right? I think they're going to pass us. I think they might. All right, it's time for Into the Future, sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. If you want to pick up this amazing razor and get 100 free blades, use our code now you know when checking out. So Aptera, the three-wheeled solar-powered EV just posted on X, Experience Aptera come together, a glimpse of the production intent build process happening in Italy right now. Along with this video of the production intent vehicle coming together. Interesting to note here that Aptera now shows us how much each of the three solar panels will produce. Yeah, so on a sunny day, 40 miles of range, all from the sun. Fingers crossed for Aptera to start production by the end of this year. All right, it's time for Going Green, sponsored by our friends at Climatize. Our buddy, Will Wiseman, the founder of Climatize, has started a company that lets you invest in solar projects across the U.S. while potentially earning up to 10% annually. Yeah, we interviewed Will a few weeks ago. You can go check out that video on disruptive investing. We dive into all the details of how he got started and how Climatize works. But in a nutshell, Climatize sources solar projects in need of capital every month using their networks of solar installers and developers and then onboard them to this, their Climatize platform which allows all of us to access these investments. And even though Climatize just got started in the past year or so, it's really popular. Investors have already committed $2 million plus to solar projects via Climatize's platform this year. You can get started with as little as $10, and best of all, there are zero investor fees. Now, disclaimer, we're obviously not financial advisors. Please consult with a financial advisor before making any financial decisions. If you're interested in learning more, click the link below or go to climatize.earth slash NYK to get started today. If you use our referral code NYK023, you'll get a free $10 towards your first investment. Okay, what do you do if you need to excavate under this? 
Is that an old library? Yes, this is the St. Jerome Monumental Complex in Naples, Italy. It was built between the late 16th and mid 17th centuries as a friary. It holds a vast collection of paintings, sculptures, music archives, and two magnificent cloisters with porticos, and one of the most important libraries in Italy, containing almost 160,000 books. It became a national monument in 1866. But why would you want to excavate under it? I mean, is it falling down? No, it was built upon ancient Greek and then Roman structures, and archaeology are trying to uncover those secrets. The problem is it's too deep and too extensive to do it by hand. I don't know then, what do you do? You use this, an electric mini excavator, the Bobcat E10E. Site manager Ugolino Dottorini says the E10E proved perfect for working in the underground excavations of the monumental complex, which is completely indoors. Its performance proved to be the same as a motorized vehicle, but without noise and especially without vibration, which are essential in an archaeological context. The mini excavator, equipped with a toothless bucket so as not to risk scratching any artifacts, has been digging continuously for two months, guaranteeing work continuity thanks to rapid battery recharging. The zero tail swing profile has facilitated the most complex operations of the project. Also, the the E10E is only 71 centimeters wide, so they can get it through really tight openings. It looks wider than 71 centimeters. Yeah, that's because the treads can actually retract in and then extend back out when you get through a tight opening. So how long can it run? It runs for four hours, and then it can recharge 80% in two hours. So basically, you work all morning, and then you take a standard Italian lunch hour, and then you get another three or four hours. Um, they've already discovered an underground staircase. And this is so cool because you couldn't have done this otherwise, because you can't use a diesel one because you would have been pouring diesel fumes into an indoor space. Mm -hmm. And like they were saying, the vibrations would have destroyed stuff. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of perfect for archaeological digs. I never would have thought that. I know. So cool. Can't wait to hear what they find. And then if they find any uh, charcoal scrolls, then Elon's foundation can help pay to get them read. All right, time for sunspots. So the powers that be don't want you to know this, but we, yeah, you and I, can make sustainable energy a reality. We may be small, but we are many. Should I gather to the troops? Are we ready to go into battle? We are battling right now, actually, whether you realize it or not, and we are winning. A new report called Rooftop Solar on the Rise by the Environment America Research and Policy Center found that the U.S. has increased rooftop solar 10 times since the last decade. It has this cool dashboard here where you can compare different states. Like I compared our home state of Massachusetts in green to New York in purple. And this map showing small scale solar generation per capita. The authors of the report point out that even though rooftop solar in the US only provides 1.5% of our electricity now, it could easily provide 45% of our current electricity needs because we have so many roofs across the country. So guess what the current top five states in rooftop solar generation are? Uh, well, California has to be number one, right? Well, for now. But actually, according to this report, California could lose its number one position this year because of new changes to its net metering policies. Thanks, California lawmakers. This one change is expected to shrink California's residential solar market by 40% this year. Joanna Newman, co-author of the report, says each of the 3.9 million Americans who have installed solar panels on their homes have helped the rise of solar power. Now is the time for state lawmakers to help more Americans from all backgrounds reap the financial and environmental benefits of solar. So what are the top five? Here they are. California, Arizona, New York, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. So where's Florida? I mean, where's New Mexico? Where's all the sunny states? I mean, New York, Massachusetts, New Jersey, we're not that sunny. Exactly. It's lawmakers and big oil lobbyists that are keeping the sunny states from letting solar take off. Get involved, sunny state people. <laughs> Contact your government representatives and tell them if they want your vote, they got to vote for solar. You can use that, by the way. If you want my vote, you got to vote for solar. Mm. It's like Arlo Guthrie's Alice's Restaurant. You march into a politician's office, you shout, if you want my vote, you got to vote solar, and then you march out. I think we start a movement. And if you want to get solar on your roof and be part of the movement, talk to our friends at Energy Pal. They're going to help you go solar and get batteries for less. Let them know that Zach and Jesse sent you. Oh, and I almost forgot. For our Sunspot fans, you're not going to want to miss the video we're publishing this week. We visited an agrivoltaics farm project in western Massachusetts. We got to interview Joe the farmer and Jake the solar developer, and we learned all about how agrivoltaics works, the misconceptions, the realities. Yeah, I learned a lot and I urge you to check it out because I think agrivoltaics is not only here to stay, but I think it's going to take off. 
I think you're going to be surprised to hear about some of the things they've discovered as the crops have started to grow. So go check out that video. We'll put the link right here. All right, it's time for our video contributor stories. Remember, send us your stories, shoot them in landscape with good audio, no music, send them to hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. What do we got this week, Jess? Joe sent us this story about an electric go-kart conversion that he did with his son. Hi, Zach and Jesse. This is Joe and Dominic. Dominic. And we're here to talk about our electric, electric go-kart. Go All right, tell them how we did it, Dominic. First, we start with a gas go-kart. If you come over here, we got the seat. We got the pedal right down here. Mm -hmm. We got two legs up here, two legs down here. So, if you come over here, we actually have the, the motor and the gears. Yep. And then we put a racing seatbelt on them, right? Like a racing seatbelt from an actual race car driver. Right here. This is how they, they, they attach right here. Yep. And I'm going to talk about how we made our own battery box. Yep. And right here. And then we have our 48 volt battery. battery. Uh, and our battery control module. And then we took some computer fans and we attached them here. So that way it keeps it cool and doesn't overheat. Uh, we have done some range tests and we get about six to nine miles on a single charge uh, whenever they're driving it. And what do you think, buddy? Was, was it pretty fun doing the whole project? Yeah, and then once the tire popped. <laughs> then once the tire popped. Yep, we had to put new tires on it because they popped. It was uh, really harsh. But what did, I, what did I tell you the whole time? You know, we might not be able to make it work the first time yep. or the second time. But we're or the fourth. Things. But even if we fail, we're still going to keep working on it and figure it out. And we eventually did, right, buddy? Yep. Yep. Just now my dad and my mom and my <laughs> sister can ride it. Yep. We can all ride it. And we said it was just kind of like Elon when, when he's working with at SpaceX. He blew up a couple of rocket ships, but eventually he got them all to land, right? Yep. <laughs> and thank you for watching. And uh, now you know. Bye. Bye. Some additional info on the project. We used a 20 amp hour, 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, and we attached that to an 1800 watt motor. Also, my next video contributor story will have to be about my electric zero turn. So stay tuned for that. Now you know. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you, Joe and Dominic, for sharing your awesome electric project with us. Wow. That looks like so much fun. I am proud of you guys for sticking with it, even when things got tough. I'm sure you're going to inspire other people watching this to start an electric project. In fact, I want to go start our next project. <laughs> We're going to go start our next project. All right, it's time for Patreon bonus stories. And on a Patreon this week, we've got GM still halting Blazer EV production. Tesla's new Model 3 ad, along with Investor Club bonus stories and much more. Head on over to patreon.com slash now you know and support us for just a buck a month and get all of these Patreon bonus stories. We'll see you there. All right, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories. It's time for the Patreon poll. What do we ask? Should Elon sue Dan O'Dowd? Yes. <laughs> and uh, most people said, sure, why not? <laughs> Soon, so many other people. Sure, right. Just throw them in. All right, it's time for Elon's X's of the week. And Doge Designer says total users on Facebook, 3 billion. Total users on X, 550 million. Is Facebook suppressing the video of Tucker Carlson and Putin? And you can see here this chart of the views. And Elon thinks so. <laughs> that is kind of kind of proof. That's weird. Ian says, at the Biden White House request, Facebook significantly limited the distribution of Tucker Carlson's interview with Putin on its platform. This move could prompt users to migrate to X, which is easily a more reliable source of news. Mark Zuckerberg appears to prioritize maintaining favorable relations with the Biden administration than he is about prioritizing the truth, potentially at his company's expense. Elon says that is an insane level of censorship. Doge Designer says the Boring Company tunnels are in active use in Vegas. Try it if you're in the town. It's a futuristic experience. Elon says in the coming years, you'll be able to travel almost anywhere in Vegas ultra fast. Elon says Starship were meant to fly and our next one launches in about three weeks. But I recommend waiting for a few more test flights before hopping on board. <laughs> oh, OK. Shibatoshi Nakamoto says white blood cells eat some pathogens. <laughs> and Elon says, wow, they really go at it. Colin Rugg says, new. Tucker Carlson says Moscow, Russia is nicer than any city in the United States during a speech in Dubai. Elon says, our subways could really use an extreme makeover. 
Kenneko the Great says Joe Rogan talks about the migrants in New York City beating cops, getting released without bail and flipping off the cameras as they leave. He points out that the city provides luxury hotels and free meals to illegal immigrants while many Americans face financial difficulties. Elon says very few people in America realize that their vote will be rendered meaningless. Doge Designer puts out a quote from Elon saying, This spending does not help Ukraine. Prolonging the war and sacrificing the flower of youth, having these boys die for nothing is wrong and needs to stop. And that's a quote from Elon Musk. And he agrees with himself. He says exactly. God Saad says, they are on to us, Elon. Shut it down. And Elon says, I have actual Mossad merch, by the way, but the CIA has some really great merch. Omar's catalog says, just got an email telling me that Elon is spreading election misinformation. And Elon says, who are these knuckleheads? Tesla owner Silicon Valley says Starship is the largest, most powerful rocket ever built. Elon says, it will be at least 10 to 15 meters longer by version three. Sir Doge of the Coin says, what if? Elon says, yep, that's us. The Daily Show posted John Stewart's return, and Elon said, Balance and humor return. John is awesome. Not Elon Musk says, Would you stay at Musk Hotel on the moon? And real Elon Musk says, Need to make it happen. How do you see the moon from the moon? (laughs) That must be fake. (laughs) (laughs) That's a fake picture. Congressman Thomas Massey says this week the House will vote on whether the U.S. government must get a warrant to search for your private communications that are collected in the digital dragnet used to surveil foreigners. This landmark vote will show which members faithfully uphold the Constitution. And Elon reposted that because it's pretty big. If if it's not constitutional, won't it just get appealed by the judicial system? Isn't that... I don't know. That's what I learned in my social studies class. I don't think uh, the founders knew about uh, the internet when they wrote their... (laughs) Doge Designer says the executive conference room at Tesla used to be called Denali back in 2012. Elon Musk moved a few letters around. And Elon said true. Santi Ruiz says 1% of the entire federal budget is spent on dialysis. We spent six times more on kidney disease than we do on NASA. And Elon said, wow. Finance a lot says breaking the White House confirms Biden will not take a cognitive test as part of his upcoming physical exam. Biden will be the first U.S. president in history to refuse a cognitive test. And Elon said a basic cognitive test should not be something that someone who controls nuclear strikes is allowed to skip. Alex Stapp says degrowth ideology has caused so much harm. And this is because of this Wall Street Journal opinion piece that says I was a college student when I read Mr. Ehrlich's The Population Bomb. I took it to heart and now have no grandchildren. But 50 years later, the population has increased to 8 billion without dire consequences. I was gullible and stupid. Elon said Ehrlich was instrumental in causing a massive genocide of the next generation of humans. Stephen King says, according to The New York Times, terrorists may be paying for blue check marks on Twitter. I refuse to call it X. And Elon says, stop dead naming X. Respect our transition. Elon said, amazing that some people still think the news is real. Doge designer said, Elon Musk will soon discontinue his phone number and will only use X for calls. And Elon said, yep. He's talking into a squash. Farzad said, hey, Elon, these are starting to get really boring. Can you have it shoot off some fireworks when it lands or something? Elon says, I hope it continues to be routine. You know the revolution in rocket reusability is succeeding when it happens so many times that it no longer makes the news. Doge designer posted this quote from Elon Musk. We are mapping out a game plan to get a million people to Mars. And Elon said, yep. Adam says, with the space concern, we need to have a discussion. U.S. space access is reliant on Elon Musk, who has shown an open affection for Russia and is actively working against a Ukrainian victory in opposition to U.S. policy. And Congressperson Thomas Massey says, hey, numbskull. For nearly a decade before SpaceX made domestic U.S. space travel possible again, the only way to get American astronauts to the space station was to rent rides on Russian rockets. Thank you, Elon Musk and SpaceX, for making American space travel possible again. And Elon said, you're welcome. Um, Because he is not a Russian sympathizer. He wanted to have a fight to the death with Putin over (laughs) Ukraine. That was something that Elon said. Mario says, Putin, Tucker is a dangerous person. Putin admitted he didn't completely enjoy Tucker's interview with him, describing him as a dangerous person because he used the tactic of being a patient listener rather than a combative interviewer. And the source for that was the Russian media. Elon says, Putin made a mistake by not agreeing to release the journalist. He does not understand the Western mindset very well. Austin says, in the long run, I suspect Elon buying Twitter will be the most important thing he ever did. Elon said, I bought Twitter to improve probable civilizational lifespan. Elon said, wisdom has been chasing me, but I have always been faster. (laughs) He dissed himself. Doge Designer says, breaking, Instagram was the most deleted app in 2023. And Elon said, interesting. Enrique said, I don't want to live on a future where movies, shows, etc. are generated by AI. Elon said, that's where things are headed. Sawyer Merritt said, hey, Business Insider, your interpretation of the filing in this article is wrong. Elon's outright Tesla ownership stake did not increase. He owns the same amount of Tesla as he did a year ago. Elon said, they're not the sharpest tools in the shed. 
Stephen King says, Dear Elon, Twitter, 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 and so on. F*** your need to put your personal brand on everything. He said on X. And Mario Nafal says, Stephen King appears to be having a meltdown. May I recommend a reboot? And Elon says, maybe he's had a little too much cocaine. And Greg says, says the guy who puts his name bigger than the title of the book on all his books. Elon says, he is quite entertaining. But Stephen King went on to say, just because you bought it doesn't mean you own it. That's a new one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it does. I think it <laughs> does, actually. Doge Designer said, can't wait for the video, Sam. And this is because Sam Altman said, we'd like to show you what Sora can do. Uh, we're going to talk about this this week on Investor Club Owner Stories. Okay. Uh, please reply with captions for videos you'd like to see, and we'll start making some. Uh, so, yeah, follow Sam Altman if you want to see some really cool text to videos this week. And Doge Designer said, did you know that Elon Musk owns stankmemes.com? And Elon says, haha, true. Not the Bee says, migrant arrested for beating up New York City cops arrested again, this time for robbing Macy's and attacking the security guard. And Elon gave the double exclamation points. Deborah says the most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. And that's a quote from George Orwell. Elon says, happening in our schools today. Elon then said, free speech is the bedrock of democracy. That's why it's the First Amendment. Without free speech, all is lost. Feel that nice, cool breeze of freedom? That's the Overton window opening. Nat Friedman says, thanks to a major contributor of $2 million from the Musk Foundation, stage two of the Vesuvius Challenge is now fully funded. Thank you, Elon, and his team for the support. We'll do everything in our power to efficiently solve the remaining technical problems. Elon says, you're welcome. And Not the Bee says, why can't we talk about how birth control pill is harming women? Elon says, you can now. Brick Suit says, based on what they did to you in Delaware, I think they're just getting started. Elon says, Absolutely. And Elon said, the public still doesn't understand even a tiny fraction of the power of censorship government industrial complex. As predicted, my companies and I came under relentless attack the moment the censorship of this platform was lifted. How far will they go to stop me? And Tesla owner Silicon Valley says, when I first got into Tesla, that's when I saw how much fake news and censorship there is. And I can't agree with that sentiment more at all. And Elon said, yeah, it's insane. Bojan says, AGI will be aligned in the image of its creator. Elon said, probably true. And Dr. Nodal says, what does OpenAI's Sora have to do with Tesla's full self-driving version 12? Turns out to be a lot. And Elon says, Tesla has been able to do real-world video generation with accurate physics for about a year. It wasn't super interesting because all the training data came from the cars, so it just looks like video from a Tesla, albeit with a dynamically generated, not remembered world. We have been short on training compute for full self-driving, so we haven't trained with other video, but certainly could. We'll do it later this year when we have some spare capacity. Kerry Gray says, someone at the conference asked me what I liked about Elon Musk. I said, I think he's innovative, determined, intelligent, a visionary, and cares about humanity. When I asked what they had against Elon, crickets. They literally had no reason other than the mainstream media told them not to like him. And Elon says, NPCs. All right, it's time for community mail time. Community mail time. Remember, share your stories, your photos, and your videos with us at hello at nowyouknowchannel.com. What do we got this week, Jess? Grace saw this all-electric bus charging at the Electrify America station in Hagerstown, Maryland. Sam spotted this VW ID buzz in Bromsgrove, England. You know, it's not that pretty a, a truck anymore. I wish it was. <laughs> Why'd they get rid of the two-tone? It I, looks... It looks so it bad. It looks like... It looks like They got a, the face all wrong. It looks like a matchbox car. Yeah. Jonathan found this BYD Dolphin in Barcelona, Spain. Chris spotted this Ford F-150 Lightning being used by CAA, which is Canada's AAA, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Stefan saw this Cybertruck at a ski resort in Telluride, Colorado. Jack sent us this picture of an R1T with the license plate golf cart in Tyson's Corner, Virginia. <laughs> Carl spotted this Audi e-tron GT at the Electrify America charging station in White Settlement, Texas. Ed spotted this Cybertruck in Palm Springs, California. Graham found this Fisker Ocean in Naples, Florida. Tessa saw this Cadillac Lyric parked in Temecula, California. Chris was visiting his local dentist in Campbelltown, New South Wales, Australia, and every patient was driving a Model 3. <laughs> clean teeth, clean rides. <laughs> Should be there. Motto Pete found this Model 3 Highland in Shell Harbor, New South Wales, Australia. And Tim spotted this work van using a Cybertruck as advertisement in Melbourne, Australia. That's a great advertisement. <laughs> What was the name of that company again? <laughs> it's the one with the big <laughs> cyber truck on the top. All right, it's time for our supercharger reviews. Let's see what we got out there in the world. Hey, Zach and Jesse. This is David coming to you from the new Columbia, the west side of Columbia, on West Broadway, V3 supercharger. There are 12 stalls here at the High V grocery store. And it seems like it's uh, not a lot around here. There's a Walmart across the street, an Arby's 
maybe a few other little restaurants around. And you're a couple miles off the highway here. It's more in the city of Columbia than right off the highway. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a six out of 10 based on the location, but it is V3 and uh, now you know. Hi there, Zach and Jesse. This is uh, Paul calling you from uh, the UK. We're on the east side, which is uh, Ipswich, southeast, just a little bit north of London. And today we have a brand new, not registered yet anywhere else, Tesla Level 4 Charger. And this one's open to all the cars as well, not just Teslas. So we've got those guys to come. But nevertheless, this is what we've got now. I got my Model S and I just want to tell you something. I've watched your show so many times, <clears throat> excuse me, and I heard you talk about free charging. Oh, that all went out in 215, 216. You can't get that on any car. Well, here's mine. It's a two th June 2018 Model S with lifetime free charging, lifetime connectivity. So I got one that's quite late in the year and I love it. And today I'm using it for the first time on this new charger in Ipswich, UK. It's not registered yet, so look out for it. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff to go around here. You've got all your typical fast food, Burger King and all that crap. So hey, that's it for me. See ya. Bye. Love your show, by the way. Hey, Zach and Jesse. I got a supercharger review for you today. I'm out here in Olima, a beautiful part of West Marin. And we have my puppy, this is Ron. But also we have one, two, three, four, five, six superchargers here. Um, this is a wonderful stop off, it's close to Point Reyes. Um, there's a restaurant here, Due West, really good place. There's a market and also there's a hotel here too. Uh, this is a really, really good spot. Oh, also, it's on a creek. So, you know, come here, stay at night. It's, there's also a retreat. Um, this is one of the better <laughs> supercharger spots. I might say so myself. Anyhow, come check it out. Now you know. Hi, Jack and Jesse, Marco Nierop here from the Netherlands. I'm in Germany at Emsburen Supercharger. It has uh, 28 stalls. Very nice layout here. And uh, what's in, in here to entertain you? That's a huge gardening center where you can buy stuff for your garden. All, all the greenery. And a little, a little bit further away, there's a McDonald's. And there is a gas station also with uh, where you can buy snacks. And there is a, 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 some kind of uh, uh, yeah, casino where you can play on, uh, on the casino. Okay. Well, you can see I can pull up to the supercharger and put it on the charger without unhooking my uh, glider trailer which is very nice of this uh, supercharger. Okay, now you know, bye-bye. I love that last supercharger review. You can even fit your glider trailer there. These reviews are awesome because you get to see what's at each supercharger. At that last one, there was a garden center and I thought he said you can buy snakes at the convenience store. <laughs> I think he said shakes. That would definitely be a plus one if you could buy snakes. It's a plus one if you can buy shakes. That's true. Yeah, and don't forget that you can put your supercharger reviews up on our website, nowyouknowchannel.com. We have a map there um, and it's super cool because not only can you put them up there, but you can see all the ones that are there. So yeah, go check that out. And uh, what do we got for new superchargers this week? We got the 12 stall in Ipswich, UK. We got number 18 in Louisiana, the eight stall in Pearl River, Louisiana. Number eight in Idaho is the 12 stall in Burley, Idaho. We got number 432 in California, the 16 stall in Temecula. Number 104 in Japan is the 12 stall in Tokyo at Roka Koen, Japan. We got number 154 in Florida, the 12 stall in Lantana, Florida. The 12 stall in Harker Heights, Texas. 
got number 155 in Texas, the 12 stall in Irving. Number 132 in the UK is the 12 stall at Medway Eastbound UK. Got number 36 in Austria, the 16 stall in Imst, Austria. Number 194 in Germany is the 8 stall in Forsheim, Germany. Number 59 in Illinois is the 12 stall in Joliet. Number 180 in France is the 28 stall in Artenay, France. Number 68 in North Carolina is the 12 stall in Hendersonville. The 8 stall in Clearwater, British Columbia. Number 211 in Canada is the 8 stall in Valmount, British Columbia. Number 48 in Arizona is the 16 stall in Tempe, Arizona. Number 158 in South Korea is the 4 stall in Incheon. Number 8 in Arkansas is the 12 stall in Conway, Arkansas. Number 98 in Taiwan is the 6 stall in Taipei. Number 58 in Georgia is the 8 stall in Duluth at Satellite Boulevard, Georgia. And number 42 in Colorado, number 2177 in the U.S., number 6118 in the world is the 8 stall in Denver, Colorado. And look, we put out so much content this week. You may have noticed that Zach and I have lots of interests, and that's why we have different channels. Yeah, we are interested in investing in companies and technologies, and so we have our Disruptive Investing channel, which is growing fast, by the way. Thank you to everyone who visits us there and subscribes. We have our Investor Club bonus stories. And if you're like, I hear them talking about Investor Club, but I have no idea where to find it. It's on our Patreon at patreon.com slash now you know. There you can support the work that we do to bring you independent journalism every week as we have done for 389 weeks in a row. For as little as a buck a month, you get access to our Patreon bonus stories. And there you can join our Investor Club and get even more content every week. And we have plans to start even more channels this year because we're crazy. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Before we go, can we ask you one big favor? Yeah, can you explain this to me? Could you please hit the unsubscribe button? No, don't say that. And then hit the subscribe button again, because here's the thing. YouTube thinks that everyone on their platform is 12 years old okay. and is growing out of whatever content they're watching. Oh. Because you're an adult and you've chosen to watch this stuff, if you want to continue watching it, you actually have to unsubscribe and resubscribe, I think. YouTube doesn't tell us exactly how their algorithm works, but when you do that, it lets them know that you're still interested in watching and that this isn't some YouTuber that you watched like six years ago, but now you've grown out of because you're like, you know, 18. And, and I get it. You might be like, I don't care about subscribing to you guys because I don't want to be notified and I don't want any of that. And I totally understand And that. you don't have to be notified. But, but here's That's, the thing. Yeah. But here's the thing. YouTube is so stupid that if you don't do this one thing, then it doesn't share our videos. And you might be like, well, who cares? Well, we care because if you don't, <laughs> if it doesn't share our videos, then no one sees it. And that's because, well, someone else's video will get shown and that that's what you'll click on. And if you want notifications, you can turn them on. If you don't want them, you don't have to turn them on. Basically, when you hit the subscribe button, it's gonna like choose if it thinks you should get a notification. Um, but if you click the bell icon next to it, you can choose whether or not you want notifications or you don't. And feel free to do whatever you want. It's just, you have that control, but if you leave it in the middle, you're just giving YouTube the control to tell you what you wanna watch. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the YouTube algorithm has become super important. And if you don't kind of tell it what you wanna do, then we, our videos just don't get shown. So if you wanna share this with more people, unsubscribe, I can't believe I'm saying that, and then subscribe again, um, and that should help us. So thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next week. Now, now you know. know.